Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jess, also known online as the Maid of Might, sometimes. <laughs> and I'm here with the incredibly talented Chris Villain to talk about the one, the only, Freak Show. We're here, we're, we're doing it. We are. Wow. How do you feel? I feel... I feel good. I feel tired. I feel mm -hmm. I feel fulfilled at this point in time. Good. So my first official question for you. Were you born an icon or <laughs> did it just <laughs> Sorry, that was Dave's question. We love you, Dave. <laughs> Obviously everybody is here to see Freak Show. Everybody's excited for Freak Show. Um, and I just wanna know what inspired everything what inspired this video what inspired the song what in, what how did it happen yeah this is a funny story actually i was actually on set for somebody else's music video we were location scouting mm -hmm. different places and we came across this incredible venue it's like a standing circus for whatever reason it didn't work out for this artist and they ended up not shooting anything there um but the entire time i was walking around i was like Okay, they got this prop. Okay, cool. This place is incredible. Shout out to Winnie. Winnie, I love you at the LA Circus. The song was really inspired by the venue, which is funny. So you would say then that the venue inspired the video that inspired the song? So you saw the venue and you were like, I gotta kind do of. something crazy cool here. Yeah. And I need a song that fits this. I think I think the song and the video were inspired in the same. Like yeah. they kind of were given birth to at the same time by the venue, really. I wanna know about your songwriting process. Like, mm. what happened, you know, chicken or the egg? Was it the music? Was it the lyrics? Ooh. How do you work? How do you do that? So, it comes to people differently. Mm -hmm. For me, lyrics come to me. And so I have a little note section in my phone where I just like, oh, this is a cool song. And I like will write down like a chorus or even a line sometimes. I'll either find some kind of music beat that exists and write to it and then take whatever that is and give it to my music team. And we kind of re-engineer and like Frankenstein something together. That's what happened with Freak Show. For this, I work with an amazing person who I still have not met, ironically. What? I know, I know. My music man, shout out to Custom, I love you. I was kind of like going through his library of stuff and I came across the track that's Freak Show and I was like, whoa, 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 something's here. Wow, it just clicked like that? It kind of did because it wasn't in, the track wasn't in the format that it was, that it is now. So I was kind of, it was like a five minute track that he had made and I was like, Ayo hey, Custom, I need take like this part and this part and sandwich those together and then do this and then get, what does that sound like? And so he was able to kind of piece them together and then from that I was like, ah, yes, this is it. Wow, so you are saying that the song itself is kind of like a freak. It is a it's little like bit. It's like a Frankenstein. <laughs> it wow. is a little bit of a freak show in itself. It could be kind of, when you have something so themed, like you could kind of get like this kitschy, can't be like, oh, mm. that's a little cliche vibe. But the song is so good on its own that you can listen to it and it doesn't sound like, oh, this would be playing at a circus. You know, it doesn't you know give what? you a circus. I really appreciate <laughs> you saying that because that was one of the big things I had in my mind. You know, you, you saw the location, you created the song, what was the process like bringing that vision in your head? You know, I guess you already knew what the location looked like, but how was the process vision, like bringing your vision to life? Oh, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we're gonna derail a little bit because it's very easy. I'm guilty of this. It's very easy to watch something and be like, I can do that. That's easy. Yes. I got this. Yes. Yes. But the process in itself becomes very difficult because there's so many things that you don't think about like filming permits, waivers, and like rental equipment. What can we rent? What can we rent? What will the city allow? What will the city not allow? And just an endless amount of obstacles that you have to jump through. I had an incredible, incredible uh, cinematographer, Roger uh, Art LA. I love you. I sat down and had a meeting with him and I was like, hey, here's the venue, here's kind of what I'm thinking. We had never worked together before or known each other before this, which was very risky, I feel like, or not how I prefer to work. 
Um, not ideal. <laughs> not ideal. Just because I'm very detail oriented, but he was so incredible in the sense to where like, this is what I want. What do you need from me? This would be the goal. And he's like, no, I got you. And I'm like, okay, I hope you do because <laughs> I have a lot of money on this. Well, listen, everyone's gonna see that he did in fact do. We love you. Have Chris, Thank did you. have Chris. He did. Talk to me about though the, the visuals, like what if you could paint a picture and you know, transfer that picture to the screen, what was that Ooh, gonna look like? I knew it lived in the cross between The Greatest Showman and uh, Britney Spears' Circus. There was like a level of grandeur that just, I don't, I'm not sure if it doesn't exist anymore, but there was a production value that I don't often see relayed anymore. Yeah. And so a lot of my ideas sit in that kind of very big grand space. And so I knew it had to sit somewhere in there, but um, not exactly either or. So you said, I have a two or three minute song and I want to make a movie. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Once you guys watch it, there's a little beginning moment before the video starts and that was way longer and way more elaborate than it ended up being um, just because that's the way my mind works. But uh, I'm, I'm really happy with, with how it came out. And uh, I hope, I hope that the vision that I had is relayed. Like I feel like I see it, so I hope other people I think that the most important person to see the vision come to fruition is you. And mm -hmm. if you did, then how can not? You know, how can everybody else I not see so. it? I hope so. I hope so. You're going to see it. Please, please. <laughs> what about costuming? I don't know, Jess. <laughs> why don't you, why don't we talk about it together? Yeah. Whether she likes to believe it or not, Jess here is an incredible costumer. Oh, yeah. Actress first. Um, incredible costumer. I'm a costumer myself. Mm -hmm. Across the board. I will not budge on quality. Like if, if I can't do it to this level, then let's not do it or let's yeah. wait. You know, there's few people in my life where I could trust with that. And you were one of them. <laughs> I called you one day yeah. and I was like, hi, Jess, <laughs> I'm working on this very difficult project and I know what I want, but I need help. Can you help me? And I said, hell yeah, <laughs> I'm there with my sewing machine. Not to like, toot our own horns, but I am very proud of the fact that like, we did all of those costumes by yes. ourselves. Sans, the jacket that I wore, yes. was yes. made by Nephi, uh, designer daddy, we love. Every other costume that we saw, I think except for maybe the, the, the flame breather and like the stilt walker or something, a few of yes. those. Yeah. All the dancers, most of myself, and everybody else, the costumes came from us. And yeah. that was hand sewing or altering or even just curating. Honestly, even curating. just curating, making sure all the pieces look good, are functional for dancers to dance in, which we also had some issues on set. Please let me tell the story. I'm so excited, <laughs> yes. I was waiting. I said, I hope I get a chance to tell the story. Shoot day, it was day one. It was day one, It was yes. day one, we're all a mess. We were lucky enough to have a costuming trailer. We were in there with one of the dancers where um, giving everybody their costumes because we didn't have time to do like a fitting for everybody. Yeah, we did everything like from start to finish for your video was only like a few weeks. It was it was like max a month. Yeah. So we had like a week to do costumes. I maybe. Think. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I'm gonna take blame for this because I just didn't uh, take into account certain things. And so the costume didn't fully fit this person. I think I went white. I think the blood left my body because we're on set, we're shooting this right now and everybody has to get dressed right now. And this costume not only doesn't fit, but it was like ripped too. The outfit was like a one piece and we thought that it was a four-way stretch spandex. Speaking costuming terms now. Which would have been fine, stretchy all over. Four-way meaning it stretches like, this, this way, way and, and this way. way. However, it was only a two, or, yeah, two-way stretch. It was stretch. only two-way stretch, really. So it only stretched like it a only stretched little up. bit. Yeah, up, it was it, uh, because it, it has stripes on it. This dancer, amazing body, comes in and is much more fit than yes. the outfit allows. Yes. And so he puts the outfit on and immediately it just rips down the side. And I didn't even want to tell Chris. Because <laughs> I wasn't there. I walked in to yeah. this happening and I saw and what I was, was going just on. Like, Wait, Chris. I said, what do we do? I was like, I I think I just stopped and was like in shock. And I was like, I don't know. I'm also like running around doing 12 different jobs. I don't know how to react to this or like how to do this. And just, she didn't even look at me. <laughs> she didn't even look at me. She just gave me her hand. She said, just leave. 
I'm gonna make another one right now. Did you bring the fabric? And I was like, yeah, wait, what? What? She's like, give me the fabric. I give her the fabric. She laid everything. She's like, just go. I got it in my hands. Never have I ever <laughs> seen anybody and maybe 10 minutes max. I would say less. I would say five or seven. Just whipped out an entirely new, beautiful costume with the sewing machine and pins. And no one would ever know. It was literally, I'm not exaggerating, it was maybe seven minutes. But yeah. the costume looks amazing. And, you know, despite like a few other fit issues that were solved with safety pins and stuff, you know, yeah. everything turned out flawless. Yeah, I'm really proud because one of my goals for my dancers and honestly everybody in the video was to like everyone had their own character mm -hmm. and everyone kind of like had their own vibe or if or like th they were connected to in the video mm -hmm. so if you look at the dancers or if you look at um, the circus acts um, they all are their individual character or they're paired with somebody and they have kind of like a duo thing going on it really informed the dancers and all the other acts of like where they sat in all of this. And I feel like that helped too, you know? Yeah. Just to kind of tie everything together. What was the makeup process? Like how oh. did you decide, you know, what they were all gonna look like? This is so great. I had a incredible, incredible makeup team. Shout out to Angela and Laura, if you're watching and I know you are. I was like, hey, this is kind of what I'm going for. This is kind of what I want. And I come from a little bit of a makeup background myself. And so I knew this was going to be a very big undertaking. And I also knew how to do it the correct way, in a sense. Um, and so I reached out to Angela. Angela recommended Laura, I believe. And um, then they brought in a team of a few more. So I ended up with five, Jessica, Nora, and Ashley added. I was like, I want it to feel upper brow at times. And then I want it to change into more of a creepy, more dynamic, um, freak show, if you will. But the challenge, I guess, was trying to figure out how those cross over or how to merge those without them feeling so disjointed that one could turn into the other. It was like a avant-garde circus. And yeah. avant-garde being the like the highbrow, the aristoc aristocrat kind of um, elevated circus or sideshow kind of um, makeup that could then because it was so theatrical and so big and grand that it would have no problem transitioning into something um, creepy to the same scale. I knew that they were like the best of the best. And so my only option in my mind was, what does your version of this look like that you can achieve? So I kind of just let them have their own like playground essentially. And they were incredible in the sense to where they put together looks for everybody and then gave me this nice little packet and they were like, do you approve of this? And I was like, what? Yes, this is exactly what I wanted. But I couldn't get to, get it out of my brain and into yours um, without kind of giving you control, you know? Um, the best, the best, and I hope they know that. Not only did Chris come to me and say, hey, do you want to do all, <laughs> <laughs> all these costumes? Uh, but Chris also came to me and said, hey, do you want to do a full face prosthetic? Yeah, sure, quick question, quick question. Do you want to costume it, be in it, and then also be in a full face of prosthetic? That's cool, right? And I said, let's go. Let's I'm go. In. Yeah, so not only do you see like beautiful painted faces, but you also get full prosthetic pieces yeah. and like real like transformation. Tr true transformations. Yeah. What was the biggest challenge? Like what kind of a challenge did you have to face being in a friggin' circus? If we're sticking to just the location and kind of the hoops that we had to jump through. And this was this was nobody's fault other than like, this is just a process. Getting a city permit is so hard. <laughs> it's really difficult. And like for a normal shoot, for any kind of shoot, getting a city permit is difficult. Once you add all of the factors that we had in a circus where people are hanging from the ceiling and, Fire breathing. and there's and that, and there's dancers and there's drones flying around and it's really difficult. And, and on top of that, we, I, like you said, we kind of had a month to pull everything together. And I wanna say, if I were to do this again, I wanna dedicate a month to just the permits. Yeah. And, and that's a shout out to uh, my mom. Thanks mom, I love you because I did every, I would do stuff and then I, hey, mom, I gotta go sew costumes, can you? She's like, I got you, boom, boom, boom. And we would just kind of tag team 
that permit that was like 12 pages. Listen, Mama Villain is a superhero. A superhero. A superhero. And if I haven't already said it, I'll say it again. A superhero. Yes. <laughs> uh, I also want to stress, like, tell me about the dancers. Talk uh, about, like, how, you yes. know, when you're watching a music video, you see the final product, but you don't see them doing the same dance 15 yeah. times, yeah. you know, in the heat. And I, yeah, tell me about the team. I'm really glad that you brought this up mm -hmm. because another, uh, again, its own documentary that will hopefully one day be made. So the dancing started with me choreographing in my living room in my pajamas, obviously. The choreo had to be not only insane, but like the dancers had to be insane. I ended up reaching out to the incredible talented Jonathan Sison, who we had worked at Disney together for years. He was featured on World of Dance and um, some incredible dance competition shows where he was not only choreographing, but dancing as well. He was like, this sounds incredible, let's do it. And I was like, yes, perfect. He, he was like, how many dancers do you need? What, what do you want them to look like? What's the vibe? And I was like, I get a choice. Okay. <laughs> I'll take anything. <laughs> Please, I'll take anything. It was important to me, obviously, to make the, uh, the cast of dancers diverse, for one, um, because uh, for obvious reasons, but also it being like a freak show, um, I feel like I had like a subtle responsibility to represent everyone. Um, and so I wanted it to be diverse and I was like, after that, as long as they can hit their mark, I don't care. <laughs> and, and hit their mark, they did. And hit their mark, they did. Jonathan and I had met in advance like one day and I was like, here's the choreo. And he's like, do you mind if I make a change here or there? I said, absolutely not. Um, and then in addition to that, there is a sequence in the middle of the song. There's lots of strobe lights happening and craziness that Jonathan choreographed himself in addition to what I had choreographed, which was again, such a blessing because I didn't have anything for that slot. We met one day, I gave him the choreo, and he says, perfect, we'll rehearse in two days with the dancers. And I said, okay, I have to count on you because I'm gonna go do, I'm gonna go do costumes and permits and stuff. I show up to a dance studio in like Long Beach, I think, if I remember correctly. I have a full team of dancers. One who coincidentally I had worked with in a past video, and she was like, Chris, and I was like, Cheyenne, I love you. What are you doing here? I walk into them already doing the choreo by the time I got there, and I was like, dude, there's no way. This is crazy. Because I'm a dancer myself, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm a, if we're in like the grand scheme of things, a really, really like strong, strong mover, or like maybe like a not as talented proper dancer. Yeah. You know, I and I and that distinguishment comes from they learned all the choreo for all of the segments I think two hours oh my god three hours maybe I could never and it's just, it's like the pace at which they picked up the choreo and not only um, dance it but perform it because there's a difference there as well yes where it's like am I getting the sequence of movements and then am I performing like am I giving a show um, the pace at which they were able to perform blew my mind. I was just laughing the entire time because I was like, "There, you guys are insane. You you watch the video, it's two minutes, but you don't see the like 20 plus takes that we have to do for every angle. I have to have a close up. We have to have a wide. Just this dancer gets a close up. Just this dancer gets a close up. And there was um, Fernie, if you're watching, I apologize. There was <laughs> the end of the first day. We're shooting out in front of the tent and I didn't know we had the luxury of getting close-ups of every single dancer because that's normally not the case. Mm -hmm. um, but we did for the, the first dance sequence that you see in the video. And we go dancer by dancer and get close-ups on everyone. And Fernie, uh, because of formations and because of costumes and things, is in like the back corner. And so he's the last one to get his close-up. My guy not only went full out for like, that would have been, you know, nine takes. Um, after a, a whole day of shooting, but like crushed it every time. And then on top of that, killed his close up. And like that's stuff that you won't see. And I will never forget sweeping rocks off because it is, it is a real circus yeah. with hay and rocks and dirt floor. And these dancers, you know, I, a few times into it would be like, oh, excuse me, like there's a rock here. and. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. And gosh. I'm like, oh, you are pounding the ground with these like ballet flats on. Yeah. And there's rocks everywhere. Essentially ballet flats yeah. and they're dancing on 
rocks. Rocks. And, and like, yeah, so. There was no way of getting around that. But again, to speak to the quality of, of talent. It's, yeah, it's, not, a, not a complaint. No, not, Just, a, not, not a, a single not a complaint. complaint. And honestly, the contrary, where they were like, did you guys get what you wanted? Do we need to do it again? Can you maybe touch on the freaks of Freak Show and Oh my who, gosh. I was yeah. like, why do I feel like I'm forgetting somebody? Let's talk about this. Yeah. I have such incredible friends. We had not only yourself, we had um, one of my friends, Jennings. We had Michael. We had uh, Joe. And we had Kira and Bella. And then we went into the practical actual freak shows. Everyone was in, everyone was insane. I gave them a character and they made it their own, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like Kira, who played our kind of lion tamer slash lion, we came in under the tent and like, lights were flashing and like she was like she had become this like rock star of a character and i was like what is going on she's crazy and it was so cool to watch um her take this character and make it into something that was better than i could have imagined i want to say that kira did that joe did that michael did that you did that jennings did that where it's like, I, I I could only give you so much because I was doing 12,000 other jobs. Yes, yeah. And everybody took these characters and made, and like brought their own talents to them and their own kind of like skill sets. And it was so cool to, to facilitate, you know? Yeah. What about your persona and your character and your costume? Tell me about maybe that process. <sighs> Myself, regrettably, I think I probably gave the least amount of thought to. <laughs> As you do. As I do. Well, I just, I just wanted to make sure everybody, everybody got the vision, you know. Yeah. And I was like, I'll, it's my vision. I'll make something happen, you know. <laughs> yeah. The obstacle that I was having for myself, and honestly, to the full extent that I wanted to do in my brain, I'm not sure I actually achieved. Now that I watch, I'm like, oh, we could have done this. We could have done this. The song is kind of has like a, a temptation vibe to it, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to create a character that you believed and trusted and that you would come in to watch the show and wasn't too scary to where that you wouldn't believe that. But then at the same time, I wanted to create a character that could turn into something creepy and scary that kind of encompassed the leader of a freak show that could also hold a sense of like high browness, you know? Um, and I found that very difficult. And I, I think there's a few more things and different things that I could have done to achieve that, but I'm, I'm really happy with- oh, uh, It's a wonderful. You thank did you. such a good job. I'm, I'm happy with what- Stop beating yourself up. I'm, uh, it's no, perfect. I know, I know. I keep myself <laughs> up at night over these things. <sighs> I think that it is important to stress that all of not only the effects, makeup effects, but the magic is practical. Okay. There's some magic in there. Yes, which may, if we don't talk about it, may go under the radar. We had an incredible magic consultant, Ryan Strom. We love you, Ryan. There's the cabinet trick that you're a mm -hmm. part of. There's also uh, a trick, I want to say end of second verse, where I'm there and then I'm not there. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and that was practical. There's no effects done there. There's no effects done in the trick. It's that you so were part good. Of. It looks fake. It looks like VFX, <laughs> but I, I want everyone to know it's real. <laughs> <laughs> I watch it when I was editing it. I was watching. I was like, what? The world of Freak Show is beautiful. The designs, the cinematography. I wonder if there's a way that we could take that into our own lives and maybe wear it oh, for ourselves. It's funny, actually, that you should say that. We have not only the video coming out, we have an entire clothing line <laughs> coming out for this video that um, I designed with an incredible graphic designer, uh, my good friend John, shout out to John. I wanted like an edgy kind of street um version of what we were doing and make it cool and make people be able to like if they loved the video they could wear it on a shirt or they could wear it on a hoodie you know i worked with john we came up with the graphics i kind of told him i had sent him a design or two and i was like this is kind of what i want and john being john was like you did such a good job <laughs> you tried so hard let me fix this for you <laughs> beep boop beep and came up with these incredible designs which actually kind of the designs that we came up with, that John helped me with, um, ended up informing like so much of what the Freak Show kind of brand in itself has become. There's a an eye graphic that he created that ends up in the posters and on the, all the merch, 
on the album art and it kind of became like the face of what Freak Show is. And um, you guys can get that on a hoodie or a t-shirt and m secretly slash maybe if things go well, even more things mm -hmm. like sweats. Yeah. Who's to say? I'm really uh, proud of the fact that I was also the photographer for that. Mm -hmm. And like, I say that in a way not to like, again, toot my own horn, but like there was something that I wanted and a certain kind of vision that I had. And I'm, I'm just really proud of that vision. I'm really proud that I got exactly what I wanted in my head and was able to uh, put it in photography and into the merch and the video for it. Um, and they, these, these, you guys look so good. <laughs> the models for this look so good, you guys. And I think too, like just the concept of freak show is you know anybody who's ever felt even a little out of place somewhere can resonate with that you handled it with such care and grace and really like if you're watching that the video when you watch the video you feel like you could totally be a part of the freak show too and i love that vibe that was my goal because like as an artist or like people in the creative kind of community and world like I feel like we all had or potentially had rough upbringings or moments where we felt like we weren't, uh, we didn't belong or we were a quote unquote freak, you know? I, I did, I did. And I feel like if nothing else, people that felt that way can relate to the song or the video or the merch or anything, any aspect of everything that we've created, then goal achieved, you know? Of everything that you've experienced so far, what has been your favorite part? Like, what has been the thing that hit you and just said, I'm doing it, you oh, know? Wow. I've gotten little kind of snippets of that, but I, I feel like actually that's going to come tonight, question mark, at this premiere that everybody's at, because I think it'll be the first time where I really get to like sit back, everything will have been done, and I'm like watching it with family and friends. And I've become a little bit numb to the fact of like what we actually accomplished because what we accomplished is actually insane mm -hmm. for I feel like for the people watching that don't know it's like I'm independent like I'm not signed I don't have like a label or anything yeah. behind me you know and like the scale of what we've done I don't want to again toot our own horns but like there are very big artists that don't have this scale or haven't done a production like this by themselves you know oh certainly not by themselves yeah um and I'm really proud of that. What's next? What, what are we doing next? Funny you should ask. This song and video was actually initially meant to be a part of a bigger project that I'm working on. I'm calling it my uh, visual EP. And so moving forward, I have, I, have, I have this video and while working on this video, I have this visual EP that I'm working on that I'm, I'm a little bit more excited about, if I'm being honest. I'm not picking my favorite child here, but like I have a lot, a lot planned for this visual EP. It's something that I hope everybody watching this and the video and would want to be a part of, and that I'm actually going to um, be crowdfunding for to kind of make everybody feel like they are involved and also take a little bit of stress off my own back. Yes. And that's actually going to be happening on the release of this video. I don't want to say too much about it because there will be its own video dedicated to explaining it. Um, but in to give people a little bit of context, I have an EP of music. There's um, a few songs. I'm not going to say how many, <laughs> um, but the visual aspect is there will be a video for each song Oh. and there will also be videos in between each song that tie, all the videos will correlate together. There's gonna be an underlying story to it all. And it kind of essentially turns into um, this weird hybrid of music video meets short film. Um, some artists have done it. Um, however, I'm patting myself on the back a little bit where I don't think any artists have done it in the way that I am going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited for people to see it and to be a part of it. Once this is done, I'm gonna give myself 24 hours to kind of sleep and then we're, we're gonna hit the ground running. There we go. And I'm so excited because a freak show is a sign of what we have to come and that there's more of that coming. Like, just you I'm wait. Ready. <laughs> I'm here for the Chris Villain Cinematic Universe. What is, what is the abbreviation CV for that? CVCU. <laughs> the CVCU, whatever it may CVCU, be. CVCU, let's go. And, yeah. you know, and so everybody watching can be a part of this. Uh, where can we find everything yes so 
uh, Freak Show will, will be available on all major streaming platforms. The video itself you can find on YouTube. As far as uh, being a part of the future visual EP, um, there is going to be an Indiegogo page dedicated to that, and you can find the info probably below this video or um, in any avenue that, that I'm on. Um, and yeah, where can people find you, Jess? In the Freak Show music video. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I'm made of might. You can find me on all the social medias and things. Um, and yeah, look out for me in the video and the merch shoot. Yeah, look out for her in the video. She may be hopping about, pun intended. And obviously, you'll see her in the merch shoot as well. And I'm so thankful that you've not only been a part of this journey with me, but have asked no questions and just blindly oh. trusted me every step of the way. Um, and also here to interview me today. I love you. I love you. I love talking to you. I love talking to you. Maybe you should do like a little sign off for everyone watching this at the premiere. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's right do into that camera. Let's do that. <sighs> Get ready. You guys, I'm so thankful to have you all here at the premiere of Freak Show. Please sit back, enjoy, and um, if you see something you like, make some noise. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>